a disclaimer, I'm not an accessibility professional. Uh, when I need to make my website accessible, I'm working with an accessibility professional. But lately, about two years ago, a new law came in Israel uh, that says that all websites have to be accessible. All websites, not only government websites, all websites. Which made us in Israel and everybody a little bit crazy and all the web development people a little bit crazy and questions were asked. And like with every society, some people went in and dug in and tried to discover what it means and some of them just decided that they don't care. And we're two years later and the law is um, started to come in and next October uh, <coughs> I'm expecting to have thousands of lawsuits in Israel about every small little website because they're not accessible. But I'm not here to talk about the law. This is only one reason to make website accessible. Um, so let's start. Uh, so what is the definition of accessibility? The WPC gives the definition of giving equal access and equal opportunity to people with diverse abilities. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about me. Uh, so I'm Shirat, who doesn't know. I'm from Israel. I'm a religious Jew. Whoever found my uh, re weird actions yesterday uh, and didn't understand why I'm not uh, participating in many, many things. So that's the reason. I'm uh, happily married, I'm a mother to three kids, uh, and I'm the Juma addict. I'm running the Juma user group in Israel. I am uh, the organizer of Juma the Day Israel, everybody's invited, September so, uh, 20th. And uh, I'm part of the marketing team, and from lately I'm part of the JAG team. So, here I am. Uh, I'm a web developer, I'm a graphic designer, and I kind of do it all. So uh, part of what I do, I'm also a project manager, and that's how I came to know um, and to deal with accessibility. So what is accessibility? So when I come to my clients and I say, okay, you, there's a law, you have to make your website accessible. So this is kind of the face, what the hell is wrong with you? What are you talking about? Uh, when I come to a designer and I say, okay, uh, let's make the website accessible. So that, that's what they think, or at least that's what I thought at the beginning. Well, everybody thinks that accessible website means like an ugly and messy website. And when I talk to my developers and I say, okay, we have to make a website accessible, I get this image. Uh, what? <laughs> what accessibility really is. So there's a lot of disabilities in our world. And um, there's some that we know. We know blind people and we know deaf people. We know people um, that has uh, dexterity and physical and cognitive problems. Uh, what we don't know or what we don't take into consideration is some more common um, disabilities like uh, learning disabilities, dyslexia, ADHD, um, something like that. We don't take into consideration old people that as their age go, as, as they get older, most of those things are things that they are dealing with. So we think that accessibility, okay, we have like 5% of that population that we have to think about. Maybe we should be social responsible, but okay, it doesn't really matter. Well, we're talking about about 25% of the population that has disability, known disability, one of those five. And then we have a much bigger um, population of people with uncommon, or sorry, with common disabilities, like learning disabilities, like older people, that we have to take into consideration. So uh, if we ask ourselves why to get the website accessible, the website accessible, so the first thing that you think about is, okay, I'm afraid from the law uh, in Israel in another few months, everyone is going to get sued, but also in the EU and also in the USA, every public, uh, every website that it gives public information, governmental information, uh, tax information, whatever it is, has to be accessible. Right, Christina? Christina? Yeah, well, yeah, I'll take it. Oh, just uh, another disclaimer, there's two talks about accessibility today. I'm talking more general, and if you want to know a little bit more deep, then you go to Christina's. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that would be the negative things to look. That would be the negative way to look at things. Uh, I'm trying to be in my life in general more positive. So.
So if I'm looking at the positive things, uh, then we should be social responsibility. We should be social responsible, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, it's the right thing to do, and we try, as uh, we were just told, to do the right thing. But there's a lot more than that. If we make our website accessible, then we have a whole new market to, to present our information to. Because if we have 25% of people with disabilities, and then we have some more common disabilities that we don't think about, then you are growing your market share in many, many percent. Um, it's a way to market your business when you are social responsibility, when you want to, uh, to show your clients that you're having a very good business, saying that you have an accessible website, that that's a solution that you're providing, is, uh, is a good thing. Uh, it helps to get awareness of disabilities around the world. Uh, it helps to raise sound funds for uh, big projects. Um, so when you go to your client and say, why should he get his website accessible? If he would have it accessible, it will help him to get funds for his projects. Um, it will make the world a better place because we would be able, with this awareness of, of the disabled people, we would be able to get more workers into our uh, industry. Because if we have an accessible website, I can assume that we have an accessible workplace um, and we can let um, before, uh, so we can let I don't know, um, older people work in our workplace, we can let uh, people, uh, in blind people work in our workplace and deaf people and there's much much more than that. Um, but let's talk a little bit about social responsibility. So, think about a 16-year-old boy who is blind or deaf, or let's, let's talk about the deaf. And uh, he's going out to the world and he's part of a very, very small community of, of deaf people. And um, when he goes outside to the real world, and he wants to communicate, he's having a hard time. He cannot hear anyone. Most of the people don't talk sign language. And when he wants to try and talk, usually their vocal voice is a little bit problematic. When we give them access to the internet, when we give them access to information, the loneliness that they feel and the... Uh, no, that's not the right word. The solution? Isolation. Isolation that they feel uh, can be solved by very, very simple things. If we would have our website accessible and he can go in um, and he can talk to his friends and get information and communicate, that's just changing the world. So I want to give you one example of uh, a way uh, to make... I'll, I'll go back to the back effect in a minute. I want to show you one example uh, of a way to make uh, the world a better place and it's a little bit shocking to look at it, but uh, it's a very, very severe case. Oh, my God. 
That's one side of things. That's the social responsible thing to do. What makes a website a good website? So, an easy to use interface, a clear design, clear content, easy to maintain. We want maximum visitors. We're doing everything we can to do that. We want longer visit stay, and we do everything we can to do that. And maximum conversion rates, because after all, we're after the money. Um, those things, if we try and make them happen, most of the time we did, I think, 80% of making the website accessible, which means that making a website accessible is not that hard. There's another misconception about, web, about accessibility, that uh, accessible websites are ugly. Well, I don't think we can disagree about the Apple website, and uh, well, I can't remember which website is that one of the Apple Balance ones, but there's thousands and more than thousands of websites out there in the web that are accessible and are beautiful. It's definitely not the case. I want to say <coughs> also that accessibility is relative which means we can only do as much, you know, some much, to make website accessible. We would almost never be able to make a website accessible for all. This is a very high thing to try and do, but we probably won't be able to do that. But we're doing, we're doing our maximum to make website accessible for as many people as we can. Um, let's talk a little bit about solutions. So I um, can assume that some of you know uh, that there are plugins for accessibility. That, let's try it. <coughs> uh, that doesn't work. Why does it work? Oh, it's over here. Uh, you would help me put it back up again? No, no, no. When, no, that's not what I was trying to do. Forget about it. <laughs> doesn't work, doesn't work. Whatever. Just believe me when I say I can send you links later <laughs> that there's uh, those bars at the side when you open them and then you can increase text and you can display yeah. text and you can change the contrast and you can make uh, links with underlines under it. There are some solutions for accessibility, but it is not all. This is only another part of accessibility. We have to do much more in order to make it accessible. And instead of standing here, sitting here and talking to you for this for uh, in the next three hours, I will show you another video. Works. Sorry. Said if it works. It works. Works. No. But that's true for 
to do in order to make our website accessible. So, uh, oh, sorry, not that. That's the wrong slide. Uh, so, why? Why do we need? To, why do we want to make a website accessible? So, it would be to create a good impression on the people around us. Uh, it means that we would have good UX for everyone. We would have better content. We have 25 more in-person visitors at least, as I said before. Uh, we would have increased visit stay because we would have the easier content and the faster to access the content, then people would stay more. Uh, we would have improved SEO, better PPC results, and reduced cost throughout improved code or in general, just because we're doing things better and more efficient. Um, who do you think is responsible for accessibility? Um, so we have accessibility professionals, so we will throw their job to them. Well, that's just not true. Um, the UX designer has some job to do when you're structuring your website, when you're thinking of what to put where and how to put it. Then you have to think about the disabled people and the way they will look at it. When you're talking to the designer and he's looking, about col he's looking at colors and contrast, when I want to tell you that it's true you can put the accessibility bar and you can change the contrast and make it easier, but for people who are just uh, colorblind or just have a little bit of a decrease in their, um, in their vision, why would they need to go and change the way the website looks? Why not to think about the design when we start and try to make the contrast a little bit, more, a little bit better? The developer needs to keep the code clean and good and structured and to make sure that even if the designer decided that something has to be in the right and something else has to be in the left, if, the, if for accessibility reasons the information needs to be the opposite, then that's how the, co the code needs to look. The client, well, after all, it's the client's responsibility. He is the one that the law is implied to, to, at least in Israel, I think also in the, in the EU. That's the client's responsibility. They don't always understand it, they don't always want to accept it, but it's definitely not our responsibility uh, to, uh, to force the law, okay? We are responsible socially to do it, or we are inclined to provide our uh, clients with better solutions, but it's the client's uh, responsibility, I think. Uh, the project manager, manages it all, needs to take it into consideration in every step of the way. And then we also have the accessibility professional that can just provide the last solution, the last checkup, and maybe a little bit changing in the, I don't know, uh, JavaScript and uh, putting some extra, um, extra layers on the website to make it a little bit easy for a screenwriter or whatever it will be. Uh, that means that uh, planning would be much cheaper. Pl planning is cheaper and looking at the big picture would be much, much cheaper. If you would take any website right now that is not accessible, that was built in, let's say, three years ago, and you would try to uh, make it accessible, it would be, I think, 10 times more expensive than to take that into consider consideration in the structure of your project to begin with. So I want to give you a suggestion to add something else to your project, except all the um, information you need to think about during the process that we all know. And I want to suggest, to suggest another layer to the planning of a website or the planning of a project or the planning of an extension, and that would be the vocal planning. So think about what would happen if when you start and take the client's requirements and the, um, the development requirements and uh, the disabled people requirements, and you would plan your website without even thinking of design, without even thinking of how to structure it, how it's going to look on the screen. Think about how a blind people is going to listen to your website. So if the blind people would be able to listen to the website and it would be structured in a way that would be easy for them to use the website, then after, after that, every step of the way, every mock-up you would make, every design that you would make, would take that into consideration. And instead of uh, designing something nice and functional for most people, and then getting to the, t to the table and starting to code, and then discovering when the accessibility person comes in that actually the screen reader cannot read it very well, if we think the opposite, then changing the design and you know, giving some uh, design notes to the developer and saying, 
I put it like that because in the design it looks well, but in the vocal planning that needs to be structured differently. The developer puts it in his job from the beginning and we have an accessible website or 90% accessible website. Also, after that, I want to invite you all to the round table. Where is George that hates the round table? We heard that yesterday. I thought he's going to have an allergic reaction to that. Um, I know, yeah. <laughs> well, we discussed it yesterday when he had the allergic reaction. Yeah, we said that it's a good thing he's not going to be here. Uh, so I want to invite you to think about the project as a whole. And when you start the project, instead of starting with a UX developer, uh, UX, uh, yeah, with a UX person, whatever, and, and going from there to the designer, from there to the developer, from there to the uh, final uh, thinking of the website, start with gathering everybody together, talking about what is the client requirements and what is the development requirements and uh, what we can offer and what are the solutions that we can offer for that and talk about it openly because I know from projects that I did from the past year that every time that I had a design given to me and I need to start doing the development then we had a problem. It's not necessarily has to be an uh, accessibility problem but we always had problems. We always had something that didn't work quite well, the designer thought like that, the UX planner thought like that and I came as a developer and thought what the hell, what are you talking about and how do you think that's actually going to work? Um, when everybody's sitting together, not sitting on top of each other, yes? Not sitting while the designer is working, but when we're all communicating to begin with and talking about things, things will look a little bit better. Um, and to end that, uh, I would say again, I'll go back, back to the side that we said that it's a relative thing. And we're trying to do the maximum that we can for as many people that we can do. But again, with some planning and thinking, and it's not really hard, and go to Justina session later to hear about a little bit more details, right? Yeah. And if you have more questions, I'll try and answer after the session. Uh, then we can make it happen quite easily. So my vision, and the reason that I came to talk about accessibility, although I'm not an accessibility professional, is that each and every one here in the room, and hopefully whoever will watch the video later, that is developing an extension or a plugin or a template or just building a website, we take that into consideration and we think about it before you're starting to plan your project. A little bit that we can do will make a butterfly effect and will affect so many people. And it's um, just the right thing to do. Uh, that's it. That's what I have. I can try and answer. Or not? Is, oh, yeah? Is there something um, that helps people find accessible websites? Because when they go on the website, is it accessible and try another one? Uh, well, the most simple thing to do is uh, probably going to be to use the tab and to try and see if it works. Uh, but usually an accessible website would have the icon with accessibility on the right, most of them. Uh, Apple actually doesn't have that, it's just uh, built in and it's uh, structured, but if you use the tab you'll see that at the top of the website it says go to main content or uh, something like that. Um, well that's actually a good idea to try and uh, maybe make a directory of all accessible website or something like that. It can be uh, another, another project for the community, uh, but uh, there's no indication except that. Whoever has screen readers, they can always read the website. The question is only how they're going to understand the website. Mm -hmm. that, that's the question. It's not a matter of uh, accessing the website. It's a matter of, of understanding what's going on inside. Yeah? yeah? There's another question, but to continue like this, Eliza. Uh, also, um, uh, in the Netherlands, for example, I know that June and Lazy Netherlands get the uh, presentation from an ex uh, accessibility expert. And um, I think every country also has a website with uh, guidelines. Yeah. And they show websites and groups and those and tools that you can uh, that you can actually hear on your website. Yeah. So we have guidelines. Yeah. We don't have uh, that, but no, uh, that we're we're being sent to the W3C website, yeah. which has uh, an example accessible website, has all the tools. I was I was really wanting to show you all the everything, but you know I only have like thirty minutes, so I couldn't. 
But there's tons of testing tools and tons of, tons of testing uh, for Mac and for Windows, uh, screen readers that you can test with. But that's actually something that I wanted to put in and I forgot about it. Uh, if we're ready, if you're ready raising that question, the best thing to do would be to try and find a way to test your website with actually people with disabilities. So I wouldn't say that for every little project, but if you have a, an extension or if you have a, a, a big project, then the best thing to do would be to check it with disabled people and see how they experience it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you check the website's accessibility? Sorry? How do you check the website's accessibility? How do you check? So uh, there's uh, various uh, ways to do that. Uh, if you check the content, then you saw the board has uh, the checking accessibility. Web developer has uh, um, a few ways to check. Uh, the, the tool that we all have on Firefox. Uh, disable all style. Yes, so it's either disable all style, disable images and look at it. But there's also a button over there that says check accessibility that sends you a thing to the W3C, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the W3C uh, website that they have a uh, checking accessibility and then just give you a, a list of things. I think Google has the same thing. Or it's maybe uh, the W3C sends you to Google to do that. Because I'm looking into implementing accessibility into Joomla, and I thought to Christina later as well. Yeah, uh, sorry, do you know the way No, but I got from uh, Deep Ewing, because you do quite yeah. a bit of accessibility yes. as well, contact with Tenant.io, because okay. it's an open source project, they're willing to give us a free license, because cool. then you can do accessibility testing through an API. That, that would be yeah, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So so most web developers feel like the best to make a test. So I'm just wondering if there's yeah. more services out there than Oh, uh, so, so I'm saying most web uh, developers, freelancers, and most small companies don't have the funds for things like uh, that. I, I, so I then they just check it with a web developer and try I to... I wasn't sure if that was the correct. I heard about the web developer just disable everything. Yeah, and well, yes, basically. The, the, the thing is, if, even if you go to Google, there's you can see how, how Google sees your website? Exactly. Well, that's also an option because the way, that's why I said that the vocal layer is very, very important. That's basically saying, how are you going to structure the content in your website? So if Google can see your website in a reasonable way, that means that it's mostly accessible. Because last year I was working with a student who's blind, yes. he's listening, but I can't follow what he's hearing because it's going so fast. Okay, so well, that's, that's a different problem. Uh, moreover, it's the screen readers, they read such a different language than, than I didn't expect. It's very fast and it's just like the, the, the computer. You know. I think it's very used to it, so it's probably yes, needed. It's <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that's why we are not able to test the website. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The best thing to do is to, to bring, if you can, yes. as somebody with disability to check. If it's, a, it's, if it's an important enough project, then you would do that. Uh, and uh, one more thing, one last thing. Uh, so to comply with the, the law, to, to make sure that you're complying with the law, um, then there's like rule thing, rules. Of, sorry, there's some rules you have to follow. And your site may be accessible according to the law, but if you bring <coughs> disabled people to check it, you will see that it's not that accessible. So that's what I'm saying. If you're trying to to apply to the law, then that's one thing, and then you have a list of rules that you have to comply with. But if you want to make your uh, website accessible because you want to make it accessible, really, then again, if it's an important enough project, take uh, a bunch of. Uh, there's also um, I will look for the link and I'll try to Twitter it or, or make sure to share it with you uh, of uh, websites that are working with disabled people that are testing websites. So that would be yeah, a very good. Because around the corner doesn't really care about it. But uh, yes. They'll have to. At some point. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Only uh, Israel who uh, uh, get. Uh, Israel has like the worst law ever that all yes. websites have to but be Australia accessible. Too. Austra all it's websites? The same in Australia. Okay, so Australia yeah, has I guess, I guess Australia has Australia Australia so great, so we have the same law. But in the EU and the USA, then it's mostly governmental uh, websites, or yeah. that has to do that you're dealing with the government, yeah. that are giving out information. Okay. I understand why we have this law in Israel, I understand the reason why to do it, it's important, but. You cannot apply that on every little blog and every little website, and, and yeah. I mean it's just 
It's just crazy. Yes. I think it's actually, I think it's in the middle of the So, so, Justina uh, is from Poland, and uh, well, she learned a little bit about the EU law, and she's saying it has to do with websites that are giving public information. So, it has to do with uh, schools and libraries and governmental websites, but not every little website. In Austria, it's a law generally for all websites. Sorry? In Austria. In Austria. It's a law for all websites. So, yes, I guess there are more countries, uh, places like Israel. <laughs> yeah. Talking about the, the website we're building these things mm -hmm. as a well. So once that the user starts creating content. Oh, this is what they're Okay, uh, uh, Justina is going to talk a little bit more about maintenance okay. in, okay. in, okay. in her session. Again, I had like, uh, I was playing for uh, 30 minutes, I didn't want to get longer than that. I was hoping to, be, to uh, beat myself last year, I managed to talk for 20 minutes and finish with it. Uh, so it didn't work, I'm talking for 36 minutes already. Not letting you go easily. Sorry? I'm not letting you off so easily. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Accessibility <laughs> is a very nice uh, uh, problem now. Nice. Uh, nice. 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 It's not. It's, it's very. It's a very interesting problem. It's very trendy problem. Wow. <laughs> it's not a problem, you know. We cannot say. It's a yeah. No. It's not a problem. It's an issue we have to consider and yes. think about. And but yes. there is a problem when you have to uh, apply accessibility in every problem. Yeah. Yes. It's so it's just, it's just, that's just great. Well, we're trying to the the, the person that I work with that is uh, the accessibility expert yeah. that I will be happy to refer him to whoever wants to talk with him, and he will be happy to he's help, happy to help the Joomla community to make our website better. Uh, so he uh, one of the things he, he's doing he's volunteering for the organization that is uh, helping disabled people in Israel. So when they talked about this law, th this organization had to go to uh, to the government and talk about it. So he's the one of the people who goes there. So I like hear inside uh, inside information about what's going to be. So there might be a possibility that they will take it into um, that only websites, only businesses, because it's businesses, not websites. Um, every business that earns less than five hundred thousand dollars, which is a half a million, not dollars, check out, which is about about a hundred thousand dollars, something like that, everyone that earns less than that a year uh, would not have to comply with the law, except uh, libraries and schools and, and all yes. the like that. Uh, So that's like something that we hear about, there's been talked about it, but it's not necessarily going to happen. The, the law is going to come in October 20, 2016 and if the, uh, like, there's no opportunity yeah. to change it. Yeah. So I'm saying they're talking about it, but uh, nothing has been changed yet. They're only discussing it. So in the meantime, uh, I think I'm going to earn a lot of money in the next two months <laughs> <laughs> getting all the way. Yes, yes, but I'm not doing the accessibility, so that doesn't really help me. But you are an assaulted. Yes, I'm the project manager of the many projects. Uh, that's it. Anything else?